So far we've already learned how to solve systems by using graphing and by substitution. Today we're going to learn a third method called elimination. So the elimination method, it starts out where it looks kind of complicated, but um, after practice a lot of students actually tell me this is their favorite one. So the elimination method, I'm going to give you five steps and I just want you to write them down so you can refer to them through the problems. Um, they won't make a lot of sense until we actually uh, work through problems. But So the first step is you're going to arrange the equations with like terms and columns. So like if your first equation is 3x plus y equals 2, and your next equation is y equals 2x minus 6, you want to arrange it so they're either both in slope-intercept form or both in, both in standard form. So I might like subtract 2x from both sides and get something like negative 2x plus y equals negative 6. So that's going to make it a lot easier to solve if you line them up. Okay. Second thing that you want to do is if necessary, you're going to make either the x terms or the y terms opposites. Okay. You want to make them opposites by multiplying one or both of the um, equations by the appropriate number. So to make them opposites. So right now, if I was looking just up at this little example in the top corner, neither my x's or my y's are opposites, because 3 and negative 2 aren't opposites, and y and y are not opposites. So I might choose to multiply either of the equations by a negative. So I might multiply the second equation by negative 1. The thing that would happen there, then I'd have, um, I'll write it on the left, 2x minus y equals 6, and I'd have 3x plus y equals 2. So this would look nice because they were opposites. Okay. The third thing, after you've made a pair of opposites, you are going to add the resulting equations and solve for the remaining variable. So I like to think of it like this because, so for example, 2x minus y in my second equation, that equals 6. Okay. So 2x minus y and 6 are the same thing. So if I add 2x minus y to one side of this equation and 6 to the other, I'm really doing the same thing to both sides. So it's perfectly legitimate to just add these equations straight down. So what I do in this case, I do 3x plus 2x is 5x. y plus negative y is 0, so I won't write it. And 2 plus 6 is 8. So 5x equals 8. If I divide both sides by 5 to get y alone, I know that x equals 1.6. Okay, so I've solved for the remaining variable. And then lastly, you have to substitute the value obtained in step 3 in either original equation and solve for the other variable. So I might go back to this equation, y equals 2x minus 6. I would say, okay, so y equals 2 times 1.6 minus 6. So 3.2 minus 6, negative 2.8 is what I think y would equal. Okay, so that's just a simple equation, and just like you have done before, you should always check your answer and make sure it's really right. So I would want to know, does 3 times x plus y really equal 2, and does y really equal 2x minus 6? So I might just try um, 3 times x, and I thought x was 1.6, so 3 times 1.6 plus y, which I got as negative 2.8, that does equal 2, so most likely I got it right. Okay, so checking your answer. So I know that's really crammed in up there, but there's our five steps, and we're just going to practice this a lot to see if you can get good at all of the steps. Okay, so the first thing here, if I'm going to solve by elimination, some of these problems like this one are set up so they're nice and easy to do. Because the first term was to arrange them so the like terms were in like columns, and here they're already arranged up so they're perfectly exactly the same so far. And then second step was to make a pair of opposites, which you already have again. So we can move on to the beauty of elimination here and just solving them straight down. So I'm going to go ahead and add my two equations. So 2x plus negative 2x is 0. That's gone. 3y and 9y is 12y. 11 and 1 is 12. So I think that 12y equals 12. If I divide both sides by 12, I've got y equals 1. Okay, now I need to go to either of the original two equations and solve for my other variable x. So I'm going to just choose the first one. So I've got 2x plus 3 times y, and I think y is 1, should equal 11. So 2x plus 3 equals 11. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I get 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, and I get x equals 4. So I think that at y equals 1 and x equals 4, I'm going to check in this... Um, the second equation to see if I'm right. 
So I want to know if negative 2 times 4 plus 9 times 1 really does equal 1, and that's negative 8 plus 9. That really is 1, so I'm good to go. And I've gotten my answer right, x equals 4 and y equals 1. And you could write it like 4, 1 if you want. Okay. So we're going to practice more elimination. I want you to see if you can solve this one on your own. Um, and then come back and see if you did it like I did. All right, so the first thing I notice here is that we have the like terms and like columns, so I like that. It's good. It's lined up nicely. Second thing I notice is we don't have a pair of opposites, so I'm going to try to pick something easy. Um, 3 and 5, not, one's not a factor of the other, so I think since 2 goes into 6, it's going to be a little easier to try to make the y's opposite. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this equation by 3 because then I'm going to get negative 6 there. So that new equation is going to be negative 15x minus 6y equals negative 42. And my first equation, it didn't change. It stays the same. Okay, so I've got that. Okay, so I have my pair of opposites right here, and I'm going to go ahead and add my equations. So 3x and negative 15x is negative 12x. My y's cancel out like I wanted them to. Negative 6 and negative 42 is negative 48. So then I'll divide both sides by negative 12, and I believe that x equals 4. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead in the first equation again, since they both look about the same difficulty, and plug that in. So I think that 3 times 4 plus 6y equals negative 6, and I'll solve that equation. So I've got 12 plus 6y equals negative 6. Subtract 12 from both sides. 6y equals negative 18, and then divide by 6, and I get y equals negative 3. So I'm pretty sure I'm right, but of course I want to double check it because it's easy to make mistakes here, and it's nice to be able to double check. So I'm going to go in my second equation, and I've got negative 5 times x, which is 4. Oops, that did not work by. Negative 5 times 4 minus 2 times negative 3. I want to see if that really equals negative 14. So that's negative 20 minus negative 6, which is plus 6. That does equal negative 14, so it looks like I solved it correctly. Right. Let's do a word problem, because of course they always show up and they're everyone's favorite. So, on a special day, tickets for a minor league baseball game cost $5 for adults and $1 for students. The attendance that day was $1,139 and $3,067 was collected. So I want you to try to write and solve a system of equations to find the number of adults and the number of students that attended the game. Okay, I would like you to try this on your own because I think that would be pretty important. I'm going to say A is the number of adults that come, adult tickets, and S will be the number of student tickets. Okay, so I know that altogether since the attendance was 1139 that A plus S equals 1139. I know I got $3,067, so I got $5 for every adult and $1 for every student. So five times my adults was that, and one times my students, which I'm just going to call that students, equals 3067. Okay. All right, because I think this might be relatively easy to do. I don't have a pair of opposites right now, but S and S, you know, all I have to do is multiply by negative 1. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 1, so I'm just going to go ahead with my black pen and make everything the opposite, okay, because I think that will be easier. So now I'm going to go ahead and add these two equations. So negative A plus 5A is 4A. S and negative S cancel out. And then negative 1139 plus 3067 equals 1928. So I got 4a equals 1928. So now I'm going to divide 1928 by 4 and 4a by 4 and get that a equals 482. Okay. So I think that there's 482 adults that go. And since adults plus students must equal 1139, I'm going to do 1139 minus 482 to figure out my students. And it looks like we should have 657 students. So S equals 657. And now I just want to double check that I'm right here. So I want to know if 5 times my adult tickets, okay, so 5 times 482 plus 657. I want to make sure that's really 3,657 and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. 
Um, and I'm just checking it on my calculator right now, and I do get 3,067. So that looks good. So my answer is a word problem. I should always answer in words. So I think that 482 adults and 657 students were at the game. Okay, and everything was double checking, so I'm feeling pretty confident about this. The thing I love about systems is how easy it is to double check. Okay. All right, so let's try another example. Uh, this one try completely on your own and see if you can get it. So suppose the band sells cans of popcorn for $5 per can and cans of mixed nuts for $8 per can. So I'm going to call popcorn P and mixed nuts N. The band sells a total of 240 cans and receives a total of $1,614. So this seems extremely similar to the last problem. So I know that the number of cans of popcorn plus the cans, uh, so pop, nuts and popcorn together has to equal $240, I mean 240 cans. And then the money times the nuts is 8 times the nuts plus 5 times the popcorn has to equal 1614. Okay. And then I would solve this really in a very similar manner. I'd multiply the top equation by negative 1. And then I'd, uh, no, I went, this is a little bit harder. That wouldn't work. But maybe by negative 5 to get those to cancel out. So negative 5 times 240. Um, and then that would be a little better. So then this happens to equal negative 1,200. And usually I actually would write it over. I'm just kind of crunched for space. So I've got 3n over here, and that should equal 414. And then if I divide 414 by 3, I get n equals 138. So I think I sold 138 cans of nuts, which means I should have sold 102 cans of popcorn. And hopefully that's what you got. I'm not going to show you the check this time for sake of time. All right, last problem. This would be the hardest pro type of problem that you would probably have when you're trying to solve it by elimination. Um, a hint that's happening is you're going to have to multiply both equations. The reason why this is hard is because 3 is not a factor of 5, and 5 is not a factor of 7, so it's not really easy to come up with something that to eliminate one of the variables. So what we're going to have to do here in this case is multiply them both. And I think 3 and 5 are a little easier to work with. So I'm going to try to make the x's opposites. And so how I'm going to do that is kind of multiply them by um, each other, but one positive and one negative. So if I multiply the first equation by negative 5 and the second one by positive 3, I can get those both to equal um, 15 or negative 15, which are opposites. So it looks like the first one's going to be negative 15x minus 25y equals negative 50. And then the bottom one, if I multiply by 3, is going to be 15x plus 21y equals 30. Okay. Now this looks nice. I can solve it just like I have been solving by adding them up together. So my x's cancel out. My y is negative 4y equals negative 20. If I divide that by 4, I think y equals 5. Then I'm going to go into one of the original equations. I'll just go on the first one again. So 3x plus 5y, and y is 5, equals 10. So I think 3x plus 25 equals 10. If I subtract 15 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 15. So x must be negative 5. Okay, and then, so I think my answer is negative 5, 5, and I'll leave you to double check that one. Okay, so in closure, the thing I'd like you to think about tonight is when do you think that using elimination will be the most efficient method? So when do you think that's the quickest? Why do we have that method? Sometimes it's really good. When do you think substitution is going to be the best? And when is graphing going to be the best? So I'd love it if you can come up with some good answers for those for me. And that's about it. I hope that you're having a lovely first week back.